When somebody's attached to a wreck, they're stretched, and what you hear is the popping sound of their joints and the cartilage as they are slowly dislocated. This video delves into a chilling facet of history, scrutinizing 10 of the most brutal tortures inflicted on women. Though these horrors are far in the past, acknowledging their existence reminds us of the necessity of preserving human rights and dignity today. Number one, the pair of anguish. One of the most insidious instruments of torture in history was the pair of anguish, also known as the choke pair. Despite its benign name, this device was a symbol of utter dread during the Middle Ages, typically used to punish women accused of witchcraft, heresy, or other crimes of the period. The pair of anguish was a mechanical device made of metal, comprising of four leaves that slowly separated from each other as the torturer turned a screw. The method of application varied, but it was generally used to mutilate orifices of the accused, causing excruciating pain and often leading to death. The irony of the pair of anguish is found in its seemingly innocent design. When closed, it could easily be mistaken for a large pair, a disguise that hid its brutal purpose. However, once inserted into the victim and the screw was turned, the leaves would gradually expand, causing unimaginable suffering. This tool was particularly used against women, with torturers justifying its usage by associating the victims with unnatural acts. The majority of victims were women accused of witchcraft, as witch hunts were rampant during this era. Society's fear and misunderstanding of women who were different or non-conforming often resulted in accusations of witchcraft, leading to the pair of anguish's dreadful application. Not only was the pair of anguish a physical torture device, but it was also a psychological tool. The fear it invoked in the general populace served to deter dissent and maintain the social order. It was a poignant reminder of the consequences of disobedience and the extent to which those in power would go to keep control. Although the pair of anguish is a relic of a bygone era, its legacy serves as a grim reminder of the depths of human cruelty, particularly against women. It highlights the desperate need for societal progress and respect for individual rights, irrespective of gender. The pair of anguish, like all forms of torture, underlines the importance of remembering our past, no matter how painful, to ensure such atrocities are never repeated. Number 2. The Scold's Bridle The Scold's Bridle, a brutal device from the dark pages of history also known as the Branks, was specifically designed for women. Originating from Britain in the 16th century, it served as a punishing tool for women accused of scolding or nagging, effectively silencing their voices, both literally and metaphorically. The Scold's Bridle was a metal mask or cage that encased the woman's head, with an iron plate or bit that was inserted into the mouth to press down on the tongue. This grotesque device rendered the wearer unable to speak and caused great discomfort and humiliation. Furthermore, it was often publicly displayed, exacerbating the psychological torment inflicted on the woman. Use of the scold's bridle was not limited to accusations of nagging or argumentative behavior. It was also applied to women deemed gossips, liars, or witches, it was used against women who did not conform to societal expectations of the time, those who expressed their opinions too freely or loudly or stood against the norm. A key aspect of this device's cruelty lies in the public humiliation it caused. The woman was paraded around town wearing the scold's bridle, encouraging mockery and derision from the community. This public display served a dual purpose, punishing the accused and warning other women of the potential consequences of nonconformity or rebellion. Many versions of the scold's bridle had a bell attached, adding to the woman's shame as she moved around. This bell served as an audible sign of her approach, warning others to steer clear or join in the public humiliation. The combination of physical discomfort and public shame was designed to break the woman's spirit, force her into submission, and deter others from similar behavior. Unfortunately, the scold's bridle's usage was not limited to Britain alone. The brutal device was exported to various colonies, spreading its reign of terror across different cultures and societies. It found particular favor in colonies where witch hunts were rampant, adding another layer of fear and control over women. 
The Scold's Bridal serves as a painful reminder of the suppression of women's voices throughout history. Its existence and usage highlight the harsh measures taken to silence women and uphold patriarchal norms. Today, as we move towards a more equitable world, understanding such cruel methods of the past becomes paramount to ensuring they never resurface. While the physical Scold's Bridal is a relic of the past, the struggle against metaphorical bridles suppressing women's voices continues, urging us to never forget such cruel facets of our shared history. Number 3. The Iron Maiden The Iron Maiden, one of history's most notorious torture devices, was a horrifying tool of punishment and interrogation primarily used during the Middle Ages. The grim nickname Iron Maiden likely originated from the German Eiserne Jungfrau, combining feminine imagery with the brutality of iron, a stark juxtaposition. Designed as an upright sarcophagus made of iron or wood, the Iron Maiden was approximately human-sized, allowing a person to be enclosed within it. The interior was lined with short spikes, designed not to kill instantly, but to inflict severe pain. The person inside would be left to their excruciating fate, often resulting in a slow and agonizing death. The Iron Maiden was not a device exclusive to women, but it was frequently used on them, particularly those accused of witchcraft or adultery. Women deemed to have overstepped societal boundaries found themselves victims of this horrific device, the Iron Maiden serving as a gruesome deterrent to others who might challenge the status quo. The horror of the Iron Maiden lay not only in its immediate physical torture, but also in its psychological impact. The mere threat of being placed inside the device was sometimes enough to extract confessions from accused individuals, whether truthful or not. The idea of being enclosed in a tight, spike-lined box, knowing the pain that awaited, was a terrifying prospect. The Iron Maiden represents a dark period in human history when punishment and torture were doled out without the due process we expect today. Its cruel design is a testament to the lengths that humans can go to inflict pain on one another, driven by fear, power, and control. It's critical to remember these grim episodes of history, particularly the atrocities committed against women, who have often borne the brunt of societal oppression and violence. The Iron Maiden serves as a stark reminder of the importance of progress in justice, gender equality, and human rights. While we may wince at the barbarity of such a device, its historical significance cannot be understated. The Iron Maiden, and devices like it, symbolize a past that we must acknowledge to better understand the trajectory of societal norms, legal systems, and human rights. This cruel relic of history underscores the need for vigilance in ensuring that such brutal forms of punishment remain firmly in the past. Number 4. The Spanish Donkey the Spanish donkey, also known as the wooden horse or the chevalet, was a notorious torture device used extensively during the Middle Ages. Despite its innocuous name, this apparatus inflicted pain and suffering on its victims in a horrifyingly unique way. The Spanish donkey was not used exclusively on women, but like many devices of its kind, it was a tool often employed to punish those who fell afoul of the societal norms of the time, a group that often included women. This device consisted of a sharp-edged wooden board mounted on a sawhorse-like structure. The victim was forced to straddle the board, with weights or additional pressure applied to their feet, gradually increasing the torture. The board's sharp edge would cut into the victim, causing severe pain and injury, which was further exacerbated by the added weight. The Spanish donkey's design was deceptively simple, yet the simplicity belied a cruel efficiency. The device could be constructed quickly and with readily available materials, allowing for its widespread use. The torturers had control over the severity of the punishment by adjusting the amount of weight added, enabling them to prolong the victim's suffering. Historically, the Spanish donkey was commonly used during witch trials and inquisitorial proceedings, as well as in military settings for punishing disobedient soldiers. However, it was also wielded as a tool of public humiliation. Victims were often tortured in the town square or another public place, their suffering on display for all to see. Such public spectacles served a dual purpose. Not only did they punish the individual, but they also served as a deterrent to others who might be considering similar transgressions. It was a clear message to the public, conform or face severe consequences. 
While the Spanish donkey is a brutal reminder of past societal cruelty, it also serves as a lesson for future generations. The physical and psychological pain it caused is a testament to the need for constant vigilance against human rights abuses. As we look back on these historical horrors, we are reminded of the progress that has been made and the importance of continued advancement in human rights, especially for those often marginalized in society. Remembering the Spanish donkey underscores the essential ongoing work for justice, equality, and the protection of human dignity. It serves as a stark reminder of the depths of cruelty humans are capable of and the necessity to work towards a society where such brutality is permanently eradicated. Number 5. Witch Trials and Ducking Stools Witch trials and ducking stools form an essential part of a chilling narrative spanning the Middle Ages to the early modern period, marked by fear, superstition, and the systemic persecution of women. While witch trials are more broadly known, ducking stools were a specific instrument of torture and humiliation often employed during these trials, specifically against women. Witch trials were judicial procedures in Europe and its colonies from the 15th to the 18th centuries, focused on prosecuting individuals accused of witchcraft. This was a time of widespread hysteria and fear of the supernatural, fueled by religious fervor, societal unrest, and a lack of understanding of natural phenomena. Women bore the brunt of these trials, with estimates suggesting that 75-85% of those accused and executed for witchcraft were women. Ducking stools were a common form of punishment during these trials. This apparatus consisted of a chair attached to a lever used to dunk the accused into a body of water. The ducking stool was not just a means of physical torture, but served to humiliate the victim publicly, often paraded through the streets before the punishment. The logic behind the ducking stool was rooted in superstition and religious beliefs. It was believed that water, a pure element, would reject witches. If the accused floated, they were deemed guilty of witchcraft, as it was seen as a sign that the water was rejecting them. However, if they sank, and potentially drowned, they were considered innocent. Such a trial by ordeal was a no-win situation for the accused. Either they survived the ducking but were condemned as witches, leading to execution, or they drowned, proving their innocence but losing their lives in the process. The insidiousness of this method lies in its manipulation of natural phenomena to justify and conduct brutal acts of violence, particularly against women. The witch trials and the use of ducking stools are a somber reflection of the extremes of human fear and the capacity for cruelty. They demonstrate the lengths societies have gone to suppress and control women, particularly those who challenged societal norms. In remembering these grim chapters of history, we can better understand the evolution of societal attitudes and legal practices. It emphasizes the importance of questioning baseless superstitions and biases, the necessity of fair and equitable judicial processes, and the need for constant vigilance to prevent such atrocities from recurring. The memory of the witch trials and the ducking stools serves as a stark reminder of past injustices and the ongoing struggle for women's rights and equality. Number 6. The Spanish Inquisition and Torture Rack The Spanish Inquisition, a notorious period in history marked by religious persecution and systematic torture, was the backdrop for the use of many horrific devices, among them the infamous torture rack. The Inquisition's reign from the 15th to the 19th centuries was characterized by fear, violence, and the uncompromising enforcement of religious orthodoxy. The torture rack, although not exclusively used on women, was nonetheless a gruesome tool often employed against them. The torture rack, also known as the rack, was a rectangular wooden frame with a roller at each end. The victim's ankles and wrists were tied to the rollers, and a handle was used to gradually increase the tension, stretching the victim's body to unbearable lengths. The extreme stretching caused excruciating pain, often leading to dislocation of the limbs and severe muscle damage. The Spanish Inquisition used the rack as a means of extracting confessions from those accused of heresy. The pain was so severe that many victims confessed to crimes they had not committed, simply to end their suffering. In some instances, weights or other torture methods were added to increase the pain. 
The Spanish Inquisition's use of the torture rack was symbolic of its wider systemic oppression. The horrific physical pain it inflicted was part of a broader strategy of instilling fear, maintaining control, and suppressing dissent. The rack, along with the other methods of the Inquisition, served as a brutal assertion of power. However, the legacy of the Spanish Inquisition and the torture rack extends beyond their historical context. They serve as potent reminders of the dangers of religious fanaticism, unchecked power, and the violation of human rights. They underscore the urgent need for protection against torture and the importance of freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. Remembering these grim chapters in history helps us appreciate the strides we have made towards human rights and the rule of law. The brutalities of the Spanish Inquisition and the torture rack emphasize the need for vigilance and resistance against any forms of oppression. The memories of those women who suffered under such horrific devices remind us of the importance of continuing the fight for gender equality, justice, and human rights for all. They underline the necessity of learning from the past to prevent such atrocities from recurring and to continue working towards a more just and equitable world. Number 7. The Chinese Foot Binding Chinese foot binding, a deeply rooted cultural practice in Imperial China, is one of the most brutal forms of body modification inflicted upon women. While not a torture device in the conventional sense, the practice was nonetheless a form of physical and psychological oppression, binding not just the feet, but the freedom and mobility of women in a patriarchal society. Foot binding was a custom practiced for nearly a millennium in China, from the 10th to the 20th century. It involved the application of tightly bound bandages to a young girl's feet, typically between the ages of four and nine. The process aimed to manipulate the growth of the feet, resulting in a lotus foot, a dainty, sharply curved foot, measuring only about three to four inches long. The binding process was agonizing. The arch of the foot was broken, and the toes were folded under the sole, bound tightly with bandages to maintain the foot's small, pointed shape. The pain was intense and often led to complications such as infection, gangrene, and lifelong disabilities. Foot binding was more than just a beauty standard. It was a symbol of status and virtue. Bound feet were seen as a mark of femininity and refinement, signifying a woman's suitability for marriage. The practice became a way to control and restrict women's mobility, reinforcing their dependence and subservience in a deeply patriarchal society. The psychological torture was equally significant. The young girls subjected to this practice were forced to conform to a harmful societal standard, enduring immense pain and lifelong disability. They were trapped in a system where their worth was measured by the size of their feet, where beauty equated to suffering, and where their physical and social mobility was severely restricted. Remembering foot binding is crucial in highlighting the lengths to which societal norms can go to control and oppress. It serves as a stark reminder of the importance of challenging harmful cultural practices, advocating for women's rights, and promoting gender equality. Foot binding symbolizes a dark chapter in women's history, reinforcing the necessity to continually strive for progress and the empowerment of women globally. It is a vivid example of why the fight for women's autonomy, body integrity, and freedom from harmful traditional practices is as relevant today as it ever was. Number 8. The Witch's Cradle The Witch's Cradle, also known as the Pendulum, was a disturbing instrument of torture often used during the witch hunts of the 15th to the 18th centuries. While its use was not exclusive to women, women were frequently the victims of this form of torture due to the widespread paranoia and persecution surrounding suspected witches during this period. The Witch's Cradle was a simple yet sinister device, the accused was bound and suspended from a rope or chain in a way that allowed them to swing freely. The individual was often blindfolded or hooded, which heightened their sense of disorientation. The torturer would then swing or spin the person, leading to extreme vertigo and psychological distress. Prolonged use of the witch's cradle resulted in sleep deprivation, extreme disorientation, and a significant physical and mental strain. These effects made the victim more likely to confess to the alleged crimes, often as a desperate measure to end their suffering. In this way, the witch's cradle served as a powerful tool in the hands of the witch trial interrogators. 
While the physical pain induced by the witch's cradle was significant, the psychological torment was perhaps more damaging. The disorientation, the fear of the unknown, and the relentless nature of the torture broke down the victim's mental resistance. The victims, predominantly women, were subjected to this horror simply based on suspicion and often unfounded accusations. The witch's cradle was more than just a tool of torture. It was an instrument of patriarchal control and societal manipulation. The fear it instilled served to uphold the societal order of the time and was a brutal means of silencing those who dared to defy this order, particularly women who threatened the status quo. Reflecting on the use of the witch's cradle is a sobering reminder of the extreme lengths societies have gone to suppress dissent and enforce conformity. It underscores the importance of safeguarding individual rights and freedoms, resisting unfounded fears, and promoting justice. The legacy of the witch's cradle reminds us of the need to question societal norms and fight against harmful practices. As we recall the atrocities committed in the name of witch hunts, we are reminded of the importance of fair and just treatment for all individuals, irrespective of gender. Remembering the witch's cradle and the horrific treatment of those suspected of witchcraft serves as a stark warning against the dangers of fear, ignorance, and prejudice. It highlights the necessity of continual progress in human rights and gender equality and the importance of standing up against all forms of oppression and injustice. The memory of the witch's cradle is a chilling reminder of our collective past and a call to action for a more compassionate and understanding future. Number 9. The Heretic's Fork The Heretic's Fork is a chilling artifact from the annals of historical torture methods. The fork, used during the Middle Ages, was a brutal tool employed in the interrogation and punishment of individuals suspected of heresy. Women, often unfairly targeted and persecuted during this period, were frequently subjected to this gruesome form of torture. The heretic's fork was a metal device, consisting of two opposed bi-pronged forks. One end was strapped around the victim's neck, while the other end pointed into the chin and sternum. The design of the device made it impossible for the victim to move their head without causing severe pain. This method was particularly insidious, as it did not cause death, but rather prolonged the agony. The victims were kept awake in extreme discomfort, unable to lie down or rest their heads without driving the prongs further into their flesh. As with many torture methods, the primary goal was to extract confessions, which victims often gave merely to escape the torment. Women bore a significant brunt of these practices, particularly during periods of religious extremism and paranoia, such as the Inquisition. Accusations of heresy were often leveled against those who challenged established norms or were seen as deviant, including outspoken or non-conforming women. Beyond the excruciating physical pain, the use of the heretic's fork represented a larger system of psychological and societal torment. The fear it instilled served to enforce conformity, suppress dissent, and maintain power structures, often at the expense of women's freedom and rights. Reflecting on the brutality of the heretic's fork provides a stark reminder of the lengths societies have historically gone to control and oppress. It underscores the dangers of dogmatism, the importance of freedom of thought, and the need to safeguard against cruel and inhuman treatment. The legacy of the heretic's fork serves as a sobering testament to human cruelty, and the capacity for oppression. At the same time, it is a reminder of the resilience of those who have suffered under such practices and the enduring fight for justice and equality. The history of the Heretic's Fork and the stories of those who endured this torture highlight the necessity for ongoing vigilance in the defense of human rights. It underscores the importance of challenging harmful practices, standing against the violation of human dignity and continuing the fight for gender equality. Remembering these dark chapters in history is critical in our collective journey towards a more just and humane world. Number 10. Strapado Torture Strapado torture, also known as squassation, is a brutal form of punishment that originated during the medieval period. Employed frequently during the Spanish Inquisition, it was used as a method of extracting confessions or information from the accused. While this form of torture was inflicted upon both men and women, many women fell victim to it due to the pervasive suspicion and persecution of the era. 
The strappato method involved binding the victim's hands behind their back using a rope, which was then attached to a pulley, beam, or a hook on the ceiling. The torturers would hoist the victim into the air by their arms, causing intense pain and often dislocating shoulders. Sometimes weights were added to the victim's body to intensify the pain and cause more harm. Women were often at the receiving end of this torture during the inquisitions and witch trials. Accused of heresy or witchcraft, these women were subjected to the strappado to extract confessions or to punish alleged transgressions. This method was part of a broader system of societal control, reinforcing gender and power dynamics and suppressing dissent. Reflecting on the use of strapado torture provides a grim insight into the extent of human cruelty. It serves as a stark reminder of the misuse of power, the dangers of fanaticism, and the pressing need for the protection of human rights. The legacy of strapado torture underscores the importance of safeguards against torture and ill-treatment, the respect for due process, and the fight for gender equality. It reminds us of the urgent need to challenge systems of oppression and to advocate for justice and fairness. Remembering these historical atrocities is crucial in our collective commitment to prevent such acts of brutality from recurring. The stories of the women subjected to strappato torture underline the importance of continuous struggle for women's rights, the need to challenge patriarchal norms, and the ongoing fight for a more equal and humane world. These reflections from our past serve as potent lessons for our present and guideposts for our future.